In the early 1950s, when Samoans migrated to the U.S., they found it difficult to maintain traditional ties. Isolated from families and villages, many became homesick. In the mainland, they sought out other Samoans and found camaraderie through common interest and religion. Wherever they moved, they searched for existing Samoan churches or bought land to start a new one. That sense of belonging, being part of, of something that's uh, going on and uh, which is good. Mm -hmm. yeah. In time, as more Samoan settled in the U.S., churches take on the character of traditional villages. Pastors assume the role of high chiefs and deacons, talking chiefs. United Samoan Church, a migrant village, revolves around one group's effort to retain traditional ties while resisting changes. <laughs> churches are places of worship, but they're also cultural centers where traditions continue through the use of language, songs and oratory, ceremonies and dances. In the absence of villages, the churches have become substitute villages where Samoans continue to live as Samoans. <laughs> You know, without, without the Lord with us, we could not accomplish this. We started with nothing. We had no support. But with Him there, we were able to move as a unit. But even as Samoans found in these villages unity, there's also a growing concern. Through the years, differences have become more apparent between generations. Maybe because of the language barrier. If you just leave it the way it is and um, not, uh, you know, not address these issues, it is a church that's a big, beautiful church, but the, the, the membership is going to dwindle and dwindle because you're going to be losing the youth. But it's not just the youth churches are losing. In the early 90s, this first Samoan church in Carson, where many started, ended up on the market. Several blocks away, this church, designed by a Samoan, was dedicated with great fanfare. In 2016, it foreclosed. United Samoan Church split from the first Samoan Church. Its founding pastor, the late George Angayotupu Vienna, was a retired military man. He and relatives built the church. On the day of dedication, they assumed full ownership and built a gymnasium for the youth. The church earned a reputation as Nukmalosi, or Strong Village. It's one of few in the area that has not gone the way of many. There are so many split, not one time, but two or three times. But this church has started, from the time it started until present, there has not been a split. But in 2014, after its 50th anniversary, a scandal rocked United Samoan Church. Amid allegations of child sexual abuse, the pastor resigned. The church, once debt-free, was also left with an expansion loan of well over a half a million. With Bingo as its main source of revenue, Malo'ulu has reason to be concerned. There is quite a difference, you know, from then as it is now, although you're, you're very limited in your sources, especially with our, our age, there's uh, quite a few of our people that are of uh, fixed income. Under new leadership, members are slowly rebuilding and mending relationships. Meanwhile, youth attendance and Sunday school enrollment fluctuate. 
The very things, culture and language, which originally brought and kept people together, now seem to drive out young members. <laughs> Samoan churches stresses that side more so than the spiritual, the spiritual side. side. Also, it stems from those who are leaders. They abuse the Samoan culture. An annual tradition brings people together. Every second Sunday of October, the church celebrates White Sunday, a special service introduced to the islands by missionaries. On this particular Sunday, children are honored. For Malo Ulu, the day also recalls certain practices that affect church life. White Sunday helps remedy the situation and welcomes back former members. Children are given a brand new set of white clothes. The young ones are baptized and welcomed into the community. Parents pledge to raise them in their faith. The rest of the children encourage parents with memory verses, songs, and colorful skits. This particular Sunday, a couple of parents perform alongside their child. Their participation in a children-only event prompts laughter and serves as a reminder that United Samoan Church is one big family. At the Malau'ulu household, children are treated like dignitaries. They are exempted from their chores and showered with praises. The kudo for today goes to the Mutu girls, especially Fiona for leading our service and of course, Liza Hood. On White Sunday, parents serve the children, reversing a time-honored Samoan tradition of children serving their elders and eating after they eat. A head count of the American Samoa Congregational Church shows a loss of over 16,000 members the past few years. For the United Samoan Church, the reasons for the loss haven't changed. The ones that I know that have left are seeking uh, uh, f uh, spiritual feeding, you know, so what is that to say, that we lack it at our church? Uh. Efforts to hold Bible studies or fellowship, some acknowledge seldom last, and many of the youth only show up for cultural, Christmas, or sports activities. You can see the difference in, uh, from generation to generation. Yeah. The generation that below us, yeah. us, you know, is not strong enough to continue on the mission. The Vienna clan continues its parents' legacy, though some of the children and grandchildren no longer attend the church. Still, they come together every year as one family to celebrate holidays and White Sunday. You hope that the generation that's are now will be able to step forth and do what they need to do to, you know, to, to to pitch in. It's been said it takes a village to raise a child. For the United Samoan Church, it will take children to raise the village. Only time will tell if they will continue the legacy of their village founders.